irrefutable proof that agricultural spraying drones are gonna become a staple in the farming industry for years to come. We're gonna talk about it, don't go anywhere. Hey everybody, David here from Aerial Influence. If this is your first time stopping by, we are an enterprise and agricultural drone dealership. We work with public safety, we work with engineering, we work with construction, all sorts of different industries, but we also work with agricultural clients. Now there are a lot of different reasons somebody on a farm might want to use a drone. Whether it's scouting their fields with a 4K camera or multi-spectral sensors, or keeping track of their livestock using thermal imaging. The list goes on, but number one on that list is agriculture spraying drones. These are drones of various sizes that can spray a liquid pesticide or dry granular matter. Now at Aerial Influence, we've been involved with agricultural drones for several years, despite the fact that it is really, really difficult to get the proper certifications and waivers that you need to spray from a drone. But we have ours, we have our 137 waiver, we have our 107 pilot's license, we've taken pesticide training, so we are able to spray with some of our agricultural spraying drones. One of the biggest surges in clients we've seen in agriculture has been with universities and colleges across the United States. We work with customers like Louisiana State University, Purdue University, and the University of Illinois, among others, but we're adding one more. We are adding the University of Missouri to that list. It was their Greenlee Research Center where Michael and I delivered to them their brand new DJI Agras T20. We were happy to work with Allison Rumler who works at the Research Center. She is gonna be their main drone pilot. And once they get their 137, she's already got her 107 license. Once they get their 137, she'll be one of the first female agricultural drone pilots in the country. We are gonna to continue to work with the University of Missouri as they continue to grow their drone program for their students. So if you're part of a college or university anywhere in the country that wants to start their own agricultural drone program, please reach out to us. We've done the research, we've got the experience, and we've got the drones to help you build your drone programs. Now, earlier in the video, I said we had proof that drones were going to be a major part of agriculture in the United States over the next several years. That proof comes from these colleges and universities who are already teaching their students about the technology, ensuring that it's gonna be used for years and years to come. So it was a long trip to Novelty, Missouri, but we decided to take it one step further. We headed to the far south, the boot of Missouri, to meet a brand new customer. Now they've got a really, really big farm in Missouri, so they were looking at the DJI Agras T30. Not only were they looking at it, but they purchased it. They are also working towards their 137, but they wanted to get the drone because honestly, there's not a lot of them out so far. We had a couple of the first ones and he wanted to make sure he got his even before they got their 137. So we've had the T20 and we've had the biggest agricultural drone that we know of in the United States, the Agras T30. We've had both of them on this trip, but unfortunately we couldn't fly either one of them because of that 55 pound weight limit. So we're gonna add a couple more drones to this trip, namely the DJI Agras T10 and the DJI Agras T16. And guess what? We can actually legally fly these ones. So the reason we were able to fly is because both of these drones go under 55 pounds. That's right, they're under 55 pounds so we can fly them. But can we spray pesticide with them? No, you have to get that FAA Part 137 waiver. And of course, you're also going to have to have your 107 pilot's license because we assume you're using these drones for work purposes. So if we legally couldn't spray pesticide with these drones yet, what were we doing with them exactly? Well, with the DJI Agress T10, you can fill it with water because with that eight liter tank, it is still gonna fall under 55 pounds. You can also get a 10 liter tank, but it's just gonna put it just over so you would have to fly with the tank not completely full uh, in order to be legal. But it works for our purposes in terms of demonstrating this drone for our agricultural clients. And honestly, it is great for any farmer or large farming operation that wants to just dip their toe in the agricultural spraying market because it's small, it's relatively inexpensive, and it's easy to operate. We also brought the T-16 to show them. They were very impressed with that. Of course, with that drone, we couldn't even put water on it because even with the tank completely empty, it's just gonna be a touch under 55 pounds. So again, with this one, we could fly it legally as long as we didn't load it up. And we were still able to give them a demonstration with this T-16. They are great clients and we were happy to show them what we have to offer here at Aerial Influence. Speaking of things we have to offer, we have to offer 
ourselves as tools. Yes, I said it. We are tools. We can be tools for you and your company, but in the best way. But we are here to answer your questions. We are here to help you make the right choice for your operation. So just give us a call, shoot us an email, join our Facebook, follow us on YouTube, all of those wonderful things, because this is what we do. We focus on drones for agriculture. We focus on drones for enterprise. So that's public safety, engineering, et cetera, et cetera. We work with you people every single day. So please give us a call. We're a resource. We would love to work with you. We'll see you next time.